Hello, welcome to Premium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 12 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about using stored procedures with object data source control. In my SQL Server database, I have two tables. On the left, you can see TBL department table, which has department ID and name columns. And on the right, you can see TBL employee table, which has employee ID, name, and department ID columns. Department ID is the foreign key. So if I ask you to which department does Mike belong to, since his department ID is 4, he belong to administration team. Now based on these two tables, I want to design a web form. On this web form, you can see a drop down list here, which is listing all the departments from TBL department table. Now, as soon as I select a department from the drop down list, we need to retrieve all the employees belonging to that department from TBL employees table and then display them within the grid view control. I want to achieve this using stored procedures and object data source control. We discussed about doing exactly the same thing but using SQL data source control and stored procedures in part 11 of the ASP.NET grid view tutorial. So please watch part 11 before proceeding with this video. Now let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. We'll be using the same two tables. Okay. Now the script to create these tables and populate them uh, with some sample data will be available on my blog. Now we'll also be using the same stored procedures as well. So obviously this drop down list is listing all the departments from TBL department table. So we need a stored procedure which is going to retrieve all department IDs and department names from that table. And if you look at this stored procedure, SP get departments, it's doing exactly the same thing. Look at the select query, very straightforward. Select department ID name from TBL department table. Let's quickly test this. So we get the list of departments. Now, as soon as we select the department from drop, drop down list, then we need to retrieve all the employees belonging to that department. Okay, and look at what we need in the grid view control. We need employee ID, employee name, and department name columns. Now, if you look at TBL employee table, it doesn't have department name column. So obviously, we need to join these two tables. Okay, so we need a stored procedure which joins these two tables. And then based on the passed in department ID, it has to retrieve the employees belonging to that department ID. Okay, so this is what that stored procedure is doing here. SP get employees by department ID. So it is taking in department ID parameter. And then it's joining TBL employee table with department, retrieving employee ID, employee name, and department name. And look at the where clause. We are only retrieving those employees, you know, whose department ID is whatever we are passing in as a parameter. It has to match with that passed in parameter. Okay, so let's quickly test this stored procedure as well. So here I am passing in a department ID of one. So let's execute that. So all the employees belonging to department ID 1, which is IT, are returned. All right. Now let's see how to use object data source control and then retrieve, execute those two procedures, retrieve this data, and then display them in the grid view and drop down list. All right. So if we have to use object data source control, first we need to have our objects defined in our application. Now, in reality, depending on the project, uh, you know, project architecture, it may have several layers in it. And it's very common for projects to have layers like, you know, presentation layer, business logic layer, data access layer. Okay, presentation layer is usually the ASP.NET web application project, whereas business logic layer is a class library project where we define our business rules and business objects. And data access layer is also a class library project, but that is responsible for all the database CRUD operations, like inserts, selects, updates, and deletes. Okay. Now, usually the presentation layer talks to the business logic layer, which in turn talks to the data access layer. And the data access layer is, is responsible for the database CRUD operations. But for the purposes of this demo, we will have our data access layer directly within our ASP.NET web application project that is the presentation layer. Okay, so obviously to retrieve department related data, we need a department data access layer. So let me go ahead and create department data access layer class within this project directly. Okay, so let's call the department data access layer class file as department data access layer.cs. So let's add that class file to this project. Right click add a class file. 
and then let's specify the class file as department data access layer.cs click add now to represent a department we need a department class which is going to have department ID and name properties so I have that class there just to save some time I have that already typed and if you look at this class it's pretty straightforward all this this class has got is two properties auto implemented properties department ID and department name okay department ID is integer whereas department name is a string uh, property alright now within this department data access layer class I require a method which is going to retrieve all the departments by executing this store procedure SP get departments so let me copy this method and paste it there okay now we will have some compilation errors here that's because configuration manager SQL connection SQL command these are ADO.NET related classes so we need those namespaces here so let me copy and paste them as well so system.data system.data.sql client and system.configuration namespaces that should get rid of those you know compilation errors now look at this method it's a static method that's the important thing so we, if we have to call this method we don't have to create an instance of this class because that's a static method and look at what is this method doing it's returning a list of department objects back okay get all all departments obviously so the first line is we are creating a list of departments object and then look at this this is pretty straightforward ADO.NET code. Now if you're new to ADO.NET we have discussed about ADO.NET extensively in ADO.NET tutorial where we discussed about creating connection objects and command objects. So what are we doing here? Using configuration manager class we are reading the connection string from web.config file and using that connection string we are creating a SQL connection object and then we are creating a SQL command object. Look at this to the SQL command object we are passing in the stored procedure SP get departments which is going to return all the departments and then since that is a stored procedure we are specifying that as a stored procedure using command type property opening the connection executing that command and then we are looping through each row that is returned and then we are converting the you know that data row into a department object look at that we are retrieving the department ID from that row and then you know storing that in the department ID property of the department object name into the department name property of the department object and then we are adding that department object to this list which we have created on the top and finally you know once we complete looping through all the rows you know we will have all the department objects added to that list and we are returning that list back because if you look at the return type of this method it's a list of department okay so at this point we are done with the department data access layer let's build that solution now let's go to our web form and then drag and drop an object data source control because we have our department object ready so we should be able to show those uh, departments in a drop down list so let me go ahead and first get object data source control and configure that so configure object data source choose your business object Look at that. My business object is going to be demo dot department data access layer. Click next. Within that, you know, data access layer class, I have a method called get all departments. And look at that. What it is returning back? It's returning a list of department back. So click finish. We are done. Now I want a drop down list to be present on this web form. So let's go ahead, drag and drop a drop down list. and let's configure the drop down list choose data source the data source is going to be object data source one since it it's a drop down list we have to specify a display uh, text and a value for the list item object within the drop down list so display is going to be department name and the value is going to be department id that's it now if we run this we should be able to list all the departments within the drop down list control and we have used that stored procedure SP get departments look at that we see all the departments here now let's go ahead and use another object data source control to you know basically 
retrieve employees by department ID but then before that we need to have our employee data access uh, class as well so let's go ahead and add our employee data access class to this project so add a new class and I'm going to call that as employee data access layer so let me copy that and paste it there so employee data access layer.cs now to represent an employee look at what we need in the grid view control I need employee ID employee name and department name columns so my employee class is going to contain those three properties okay and just again to save some time I have this already typed so let me copy that implementation of the class and then paste it in our employee data access layer file so this is our employee class with three properties employee ID which is of type string and then employee name and department name again these are auto implemented properties okay so in this employee data access layer class now I need a method which is going to return you know all the employees by department ID so I need a static method which is going to have a department ID as the parameter and then based on that passed in department ID we need to retrieve all the employees okay so the first thing to note this is a static method first let's get rid of these compilation errors because we need those namespaces data access layer uh, adio.net core uh, namespaces system.data system.data.sql client and configuration all right so this is a static method which is returning a list of employees back and the name of the method get employees by department ID so we are going to give it a department ID this method will give a department ID uh, all the employees that belong to that department ID need to be returned by this method so the return type is list of employee so obviously we are creating a list of employees object so using the configuration manager class to read the connection string from web.config file using that connection string we are creating a SQL connection object and then we are specifying our, our SQL command which is sp get employees by department ID and if you remember this stored procedure expects a parameter to be passed in department ID parameter now since this is a stored procedure we are specifying that it is a stored procedure using command type property of the command object and then we need to pass in a parameter so at department ID is the name of the parameter and the value for that is coming into this method as a parameter so we are passing this method parameter as a value for the stored procedure parameter later when we actually configure you know the object data source that's when we will understand how will this get uh, how will this method get a value for this parameter all right so we are adding that parameter object to the parameters collection of the command object open the connection execute the command and then what are we doing we are looping through each row that is retrieved after executing the stored procedure reading the employee ID and storing it in employee ID property of the employee object name into the employee name of the project and department name into the department name property of the employee object and then we are adding that employee object to this list once we are done looping through all the rows then we are returning that list back you know because the return type of this method is list employee so we are done creating our employee data access class as well so let's build that solution let's go back to our web form drag and drop another object data source control onto the web form and let's configure that so select your business object in this case it's going to be employee data access layer let's click next choose your method it's going to be get employees by department ID which takes department ID as the parameter and returns list of employees so click next now look at this this method has a parameter now look at what happens when I click next this wizard will detect that the method is expecting a parameter and it is asking us okay so this method has a parameter where is the value for this parameter going to come from okay it is going to come from this drop down list remember when I select a department within the drop down list we need to pass in I mean we need to retrieve that selected department uh, value and give it to this stored procedure SP get employees by department ID but then this stored procedure if you remember it is being called by our employee data access layer uh, you know in this class we have a method called get employees by department ID so we need to pass in a value for that parameter 
okay so where is that going to come from from this drop down list so the parameter source is going to be a control and then what is the control id drop down list 1 that's it so department id is going to come from drop down list 1 selected value okay so we are done configuring that as well all that is left out is drag and drop a grid view control and then associate that with object data source to control and then auto format that to look better that's it let's go ahead and run this now so we should see IT department selected and then all the departments there now when I select HR all the employees belonging to HR should be shown but not because we don't we didn't uh, you know the web form is not posted back when I selected you know another department so we need to set the auto post back property of the drop down list to true all right now let's run that as soon as the selection changes in the drop down list the web form should post back and we should get the new department values so payroll administration all right on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.